Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayana. I'm a licensed massage therapist that specializes in post-op lymphatic drainage massage. I own a company here in Florida that specifically cares for those recovering from cosmetic surgery. And in this video, I'm demonstrating a session with a client who's had a tummy tuck with thigh lipo. Before we get started, please like and subscribe because I spent a lot of hours filming and editing these videos, so I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, now that you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I want to apologize in advance for how the audio may sound right now. I'm gonna do what I can to make it sound better. But right now you're seeing clips of the last video when I was demonstrating a massage on a client who had lipo with BBL, which is why in the next clip you'll see her kneeling on the table because if someone is too early post-op, they cannot be laying like this. So now we're gonna get into the tummy tuck video. So I am supporting her back, supporting her cervical spine, and to support her low back, we are going to grab a bolster and place that underneath her knees right here. So this just aligns her spine because we have several curves in the spine um, that we want to support when someone is laying face up. Oftentimes when I have clients with tummy tucks, they will have a drain. If they do have a drain, I am putting the drain off to the side, making sure my hands are clean. Sometimes I will wear gloves. Um, at this point, I am starting from the opposite side of where I am standing so that I can get some traction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down the body starting at the upper lats, go down towards where the incisions would be, which is in her low abdominal area, and then go into a U-shaped motion up towards the thoracic drainage duct, which is right above her breast, which I am pushing the fluid all the way up right there. Um, so I'm starting from the sides going down towards where the incisions usually are and going up towards that thoracic drainage duct because that's the only way for this fluid to drain. And so I'm going from the sides, down the body, on the lateral side of her abdominals, going towards the lower abdominals and pushing the fluid up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> cool. In that clip before this, you heard me talking in real time while I was doing the service, and we both stopped and said, wow, because she could feel the fluid moving through her body, and I could feel it as well underneath my hands. So that was just a cool moment um, that she and I could both see the change that we were making in her body, that we can actually collect this fluid as you see me doing now, that usually collects at that bottom abdominal area and pushing it up um, towards that thoracic drainage duct. And so it's essentially the same movement that I was doing before when she was kneeling on the table, except for I can add more traction, add more pressure, because I have gravity on my side because she is laying face up. You can also do this if someone is about eight weeks post-op BBL because by that point they should be able to sit a little bit more, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Um, so that's something to consider. I'm gonna speed up the footage here. Something I'll mention is that you really want the person doing your sessions to know what direction to push the blood in because if they go in the wrong direction then you can end up with seromas which are pockets of fluid that were not moved properly you never want fluid to sit which is why it's also not good to have too much compression for too long um, but in a moment you're going to hear me talking in real time and you're going to see her real reaction to me doing the session for her um, and what that was like in three, two, one. This is crazy. <laughs> I've never heard it before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, that's awesome because that's just going to make this whole area a lot flatter. 
you'll probably have to pee later. Which is great. It was cool catching her real reaction to being able to hear the fluid. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't really catch that sound on camera. Um, but you hear me mentioning that she'll have to pee after the session because the way that you will drain is through urine output after a service like this. You shouldn't be draining out of incisions. That's a whole nother video. Um, but mostly you'll drain through urine output. You can also drain through sweat output and defecation, which is less common. But um, you mostly drain through urine output. So when you're getting services like this, you wanna make sure that you are hydrated, that you're getting enough electrolytes because technically doing a service like this can be dehydrating. Um, another thing I'll mention is that I know we call this lymphatic drainage massage, but it's really not a massage. The reason why it's not a massage is because we're not trying to access the muscles here. We're only trying to access the capillaries underneath the skin. Um, and usually it'll be a lot lighter of a pressure, but it really just depends on how far out this person is. Lymphatic drainage shouldn't be too hard to where you're accessing the muscles, but you're really just trying to access those small capillaries that are right underneath the skin that hold that extra fluid and move it along because this fluid cannot move itself. That's why we call it manual lymphatic drainage. But you see me do this motion for a while longer. I don't think in this video you will see me do her legs. Usually for tummy tucks, I do like to get to the legs because there are lymphatic drainage ducts in the inner thigh area that we want to push the, the blood to. Um, this is me going to the other side to access the other side of the body. And you're not able to see what I'm doing as well. So I think I want to switch to a video of me showing a close-up of working the abdominal area. So let's do that. So this is a close-up of doing the abdominal area. Um, I'm just going to make a few more notes here before we close up with the video. Um, usually for tummy tucks, there is a drain. Um, sometimes the drains are placed really well below the bikini line. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're right below the belly button. I've seen <laughs> quite a few things in my practice, but um, when there is a drain, I don't do this type of motion. Um, usually I will push the fluid towards the drain on the side that the drain is on and you'll actually notice towards the end of the session the drain filling up with that extra fluid so that's really reassuring um, again I never ever open incisions <laughs> that is outside of my scope of practice really no one but your surgeon should be opening your incisions um, it's very dangerous and you just get more scar tissue that way. But I'm really hoping everyone got something from this video. I'd like to do more tutorials. Um, again, please like and subscribe because it does take me a while to get these videos out and edit them and voiceover and all that stuff. So I'll take it as a virtual tip. But this is her exit interview. I decided to ask her how she felt after the session, and this is what she had to say. Okay, so we just did a lymphatic drainage massage um, where I mostly focused on her abdominal area. So I'm just gonna ask Katrina, how did it feel like doing the abdominal area? Did it feel okay? Yeah, it felt really good with the pressure. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, cool. And it's also cool because we could also hear the fluid moving, which is really awesome. So more than likely, she'll have to pee a lot. I'll just advise her to drink a lot of water. Um, but overall, her whole stomach area is going to be a lot flat, especially since she's wearing a body, how do you say? Body um, corset? Body corset right now, um, which is usually what I recommend after doing this type of massage anyways. So I'll just recommend that she drinks a lot of fluids and 
all that stuff but yeah <laughs> cool thank you for watching this true massage and body work video and don't forget to like and subscribe i greatly appreciate it you can also find us on instagram facebook and our website um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day, and I hope you stay well. Have a good one.